When cops find a stolen van after decades, they stop cold when they look inside and cannot believe what they see. The sound of crunching leaves under boots broke the silence of the dense woods as Officer Dean Maxwell led the small search team deeper into the forest. The hiker's report had initially seemed routine, a weathered old van spotted in the middle of nowhere. But something about the description gnawed at Dean. The hiker's vague details about a blue van tucked between gnarled oaks hit too close to home. He had heard that story many years ago. We're close, Dean muttered, glancing down at his GPS, the small screen illuminating his weathered face in the dimming light. Once bright with youthful enthusiasm, his eyes carried the weight of years of service and countless unsolved mysteries. Keep your eyes peeled, everyone. We don't know what we might find out here. The team moved forward cautiously, their footsteps muffled by the thick carpet of fallen leaves. Each member was lost in their thoughts, wondering what secrets this forest might be hiding. Suddenly, one of the officers, Jenkins, a young man with keen eyes and a sharp mind, called out, There it is! His voice cut through the silence like a knife, causing birds to take flight from nearby trees in a startled flurry. Peering through the thick brush, Dean spotted a rusty, faded blue Volkswagen van that looked like it hadn't moved in decades. And that's exactly what it was. The sight of it sent a jolt of recognition through Dean's body, now standing face to face with the vehicle that had haunted Gary's life and by extension, the lives of those in the police department, Dean felt a chill run down his spine. The van stood before them like a silent sentinel, its rusted exterior a testament to the years it had spent hidden away in this forest. But that wasn't the real shocker. It came when they approached the vehicle, their flashlights cutting through the growing darkness, illuminating the faded paint and revealing the true extent of its decay. As Dean's hand reached for the handle, he felt a surge of emotions, anticipation, fear, and an overwhelming sense of resolution. More than 10 years ago, Gary Shepard had stood in front of the police counter, gripping the edges with white knuckles, his face a mask of desperation and determination. The memory of that day flooded back to Dean with startling clarity, as if it had happened just yesterday. Gary's voice, though measured, carried a note of desperation that was impossible to ignore. Any updates on my van? He asked, the same question he had been asking for months. His eyes, bloodshot from lack of sleep, darted around the station, hoping to spot his missing vehicle in some corner. Officer Dean Maxwell, a rookie back then with a freshly pressed uniform and a badge still gleaming with promise, leaned back in his chair, trying not to let his irritation show. For the past year, Gary had asked the same question every Friday, becoming as much a fixture in the station as the coffee machine or the bulletin board filled with wanted posters. No new leads, sightings, nothing had come up all that time. Yet Gary's determination never wavered. Sorry, Gary, Dean said, flipping through the notes for what felt like the hundredth time. The file on Gary's van had grown thin over the months, with each passing week adding nothing but a new layer of dust to the case. It's still on file, but there's nothing new. We've been keeping an eye out, but you know how these things can be. Gary's face twitched, disappointment and frustration washing over his features. His lips pressed into a thin line, a gesture Dean had recognized as a sign of Gary's internal struggle. There's got to be something you can do. That van means everything to me. It's not just a vehicle, it's my life. I get it, Dean replied, feeling more exasperated than sympathetic. The weight of other cases, more pressing matters of public safety bore down on him but there's no new information. We've got other cases, you know? Missing persons, robberies, things that need our immediate attention. Gary didn't move, his feet planted firmly on the worn, linoleum floor of the station. His eyes bore into Dean's as if willing the young officer to take him seriously, to understand the depths of his desperation. You don't understand. I need that van back. It's not about the money, it's about, it's about what it represents. Dean didn't understand. Nobody did. The insurance had paid Gary out months ago, a sum that should have been more than enough to replace the aging vehicle. The police had done all they could within reason, but Gary never let it go. He wouldn't explain why the van mattered so much, dodging questions with vague references to personal reasons and family history. His evasiveness deepened the mystery surrounding the van and Gary's obsession. Weeks turned into months, and months into years. Gary's visits slowed down, but they never stopped completely. Even as Dean moved up the ranks, transitioning from a wide-eyed rookie to a more seasoned officer, he often saw Gary in the lobby, waiting for his answer. The man's hair had grayed, his face lined with years of worry and disappointment, but his eyes never lost that desperate gleam. Then, one day, Gary stopped coming altogether. Nobody in the department noticed immediately, too caught up in the daily grind of police work. It was only after a few weeks that Dean realized he hadn't seen the man. 
Gary's absence from weekly visits left an odd void. This mystery nagged at the back of Dean's mind even as more pressing cases demanded his attention. And now, many years later, he's found that same van. Even though it already looked rusty with a lot of ingrown vegetation surrounding it, Dean couldn't hide his joy. The discovery felt like an essential turning in a lock, promising to open doors to long-buried secrets. The team stood in tense silence as Dean pulled open the creaking van door, the hinges protesting after years of disuse. The inside was a time capsule of old blankets, faded seat cushions, and a musty smell that wafted out in waves, carrying the stale air of decades past. But nothing was obviously valuable at first glance, just debris from what looked like years of abandonment. Empty soda cans, crumpled papers, and various bits of trash littered the floor, telling a story of a vehicle long forgotten by time. Check the back, Dean ordered, his pulse quickening with each passing moment. His instincts, honed by years on the force, told him there was more to this van than met the eye. The air inside the vehicle felt heavy with secrets, and Dean was determined to uncover them all. Always eager to prove himself, Jenkins climbed in, flashlight in hand. The beam cut through the darkness, revealing more of the van's interior. It looks pretty empty, boss, he called out, his voice tinged with disappointment. Just more junk back here. Dean frowned, stepping closer to the open door. His eyes scanned the interior, taking in every detail, every shadowy corner. Something about this didn't add up. Gary's obsession. The van's mysterious disappearance, its sudden reappearance after all these years, there had to be more to the story. His gaze landed on the glove compartment, a minor, inconspicuous feature that suddenly seemed to hold immense importance. Pop that open! He instructed, his voice tight with anticipation. With a grunt, Jenkins tugged on the latch, and the compartment gave way with a soft click that seemed to echo in the tense silence. Inside was a stack of papers, yellowed with age, their edges curled and brittle. Atop the pile sat a small, dusty, leather-bound journal, its presence both unexpected and somehow inevitable. Dean's brow furrowed as he pulled it out, its weight in his hands feeling far more significant than its physical mass. Weird! He muttered, flipping it open with careful fingers. The pages were filled with neatly written entries detailing every minor repair and modification made to the van over the years. At first glance, it seemed innocuous enough, the meticulous record-keeping one might expect from a devoted vehicle owner. But as Dean continued to leaf through the pages, his unease grew. There was something off about the entries, a pattern emerging that he couldn't quite put his finger on. What the hell is this? Jenkins asked, leaning over Dean's shoulder, his curiosity getting better. His eyes widened as he read, the implications of what they saw slowly sinking in. The final entries were cryptic, lists of dates and locations alongside T's that looked like coordinates. Some of the locations were familiar, scattered across nearby towns and cities. Others were more obscure, referencing places that neither Dean nor Jenkins recognized immediately. But the dates caught Dean's attention, and a chill ran down his spine as he began to make connections he wished he hadn't. That's when Dean stopped cold, shocked. Why would someone hide this? Jenkins whispered, his voice barely audible over the rustling of leaves in the wind outside. The young officer's face had paled, the reality of their discovery beginning to dawn on him. Dean waited to answer. A sickening realization began to creep over him, a puzzle piece falling into place with terrible clarity. He recognized some of the dates. They lined up with a series of old missing persons reports that had never been solved, dating back more than two decades. Cases had gone cold, and lives had vanished without a trace, leaving behind grieving families and unanswered questions. Something's off here, Dean said, his voice grim. The weight of their discovery pressed down on him, the implications too horrible to voice aloud just yet. Get forensics on this. I want this thing combed top to bottom. Every inch, every crevice. There might be trace evidence we can use. As the days passed, the pieces began to fall into place forming a picture that was as disturbing as it was revelatory. The journal was no ordinary record of a van's upkeep. It was a log, each entry marking something far darker than anyone had expected. Every date and every coordinate matched the last known locations of missing persons in the area. The realization sent shockwaves through the department, turning what had seemed like a simple recovery of a stolen vehicle into something much more sinister. Gary Shepard had lied. The truth of his deception unfolded like a nightmare, each new piece of evidence adding to the horror of what they were uncovering. He hadn't been obsessed with the van because of sentimental value or quirky attachment. He wanted it back because it held the secrets of something much more sinister, a dark history hidden in plain sight for years. A chilling backstory emerged through a series of interviews with Gary's old neighbors and former friends. Gary's father, Edwin Shepard, had been a mechanic, well known in town for his skill with cars. 
His garage had been a fixture in the community where people brought their vehicles for repair and left with a smile and a fair bill. But Edwin had a darker side that came to light only after his sudden disappearance in the mid 80s. There had been rumors and whispers about strange visitors late at night and missing people who had somehow been linked to the Shepherd family's garage. At the time, these rumors had been dismissed as small town gossip, the kind of stories people tell to make their lives seem more exciting. Now, they took on a sinister new meaning. Edwin had vanished without a trace, leaving behind a confused community and a son who seemed just as baffled by his father's disappearance as everyone else. But he had left Gary with more than just unanswered questions. He had left him his prized possession, the Volkswagen van. At first, Gary seemed like a victim, the son of a man with secrets he had never asked for. He had played the part well, appearing genuinely distraught over his father's disappearance and the theft of the van. But the journal told a different story. After Edwin's disappearance, Gary continued his father's work, tracking down people and using the van to transport them across state lines. But for what purpose? That remained unclear, a question that haunted the investigators as they delved deeper into the case. The more they dug, the darker it got. The police traced the final entries in the journal to locations where unmarked graves were discovered, each containing human remains that had long been forgotten. Dean's gut churned as he stood at one of the excavation sites, watching as another body bag was carefully lifted from the earth. How many lives had been lost because no one considered investigating a van sitting quietly in the woods? How many families had spent years wondering about the fate of their loved ones? never knowing that the answers lay buried in the forest, guarded by an innocuous-looking vehicle. The investigation expanded, drawing in resources from state and federal agencies. As it came to be known, the Shepard case grew into one of the most complex and disturbing criminal investigations in the state's history. Gary Shepard was arrested and charged, his life now in ruins as the truth of his family's crimes came to light. The man who had once been a fixture at the police station, pleading for help in finding his stolen van, now sat in a cell, facing a litany of charges that would ensure he never saw freedom again. Once an innocent-seeming vehicle, the van was now evidence in one of the most shocking cases in the town's history. It sat in an evidence lockup, every inch of it cataloged and examined, its secrets slowly giving up the full story of the Shepherd's reign of terror. As Officer Dean Maxwell left the station that night, long after his shift had ended, he couldn't shake the feeling that they had only scratched the surface. The weight of the case pressed down on him, a burden he knew he would carry for the rest of his career, perhaps for the rest of his life. But one thing was clear. Sometimes, ordinary things hide the darkest secrets. And sometimes, when you finally find what you're looking for, you stop cold, because the truth is far worse than you ever imagined. The Shepherd case would go down in history as a reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places and that justice, though sometimes slow, will eventually catch up to those who think they've outrun it. Have you ever stumbled upon a discovery that completely changed your perspective on something or someone you thought you knew? How would you have handled the situation if you were in Officer Dean Maxwell's position, uncovering a decades-old mystery with such shocking implications? Would you have pursued the investigation relentlessly? Or might you have been tempted to let sleeping dogs lie? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And thank you for reading this chilling tale of long-buried secrets and the pursuit of justice.